Good morning, everybody. How you doing today? My name's Andrew. I'm Matt. Okay. I'm Petey. I'm Grandpa. I'm Daniel. I'm Gavin. I'm Megan. I'm Aunt Becky. I'm Joel. And we're some of the Veggie Boys. Hey, guys. And we'd like to thank you for stopping by. If you're new here, please consider subscribing because we can grow a lot of things on the farm, but one thing we can't grow is this channel without your help. Welcome back, everyone. It's so nice to see you. We are getting our morning started off right by heading down into the farm market. We weren't too, too busy yesterday but we're expecting today to be a little on the busier side now I'm talking about the farm market we were pretty busy out in the fields we had so much going on and today well we got a lot going on as well but you all know the drill first things first we got to get this farm market set up so everything in this cooler needs to be moved out farm market is now all set up and taken care of for the morning now you will see up in front of the farm market we are having some more empty spaces we've been moving plants pretty quickly lately and a big reason for that is a lot of people are trying to get some late stuff planted uh, if the animals came and ate some of their crops they're trying to get that replanted and well everything's discounted now so we have a cheaper price on a lot of our pots except for the perennials the perennials that price is pretty much stationary throughout the entire year but that's because you can plant these at anytime look at these things isn't that cool i love them uh, but anyway yeah we've lowered the price on all our vegetable plants and the rest of our flowers and that's just because as we get into the later part of the year it's harder to move this product it's harder to get these plants off of our shelves and into people's gardens and we'd rather sell them than have to do something else with them uh, we are starting to fill out our fields they're at capacity we're not going to be planting too much more we do have some mulch laid but that's for the stuff that's in the germination greenhouse. So I just wanted to give you a little update. We're clearing things out up here and we need to do it soon because we're gonna have to move a whole bunch of mums up here. We had got some lettuce picked right away this morning. So we are rinsing it off and getting it ready for the farm market. We just fill up a tub with water and we dunk the lettuce into the tub. We have a few types of lettuce that we harvested. We have red butterhead, we had red leaf, green leaf, and I think that's everything. The romaine didn't come up too well. And this is one of the reasons why we washed this. See the stones in there? We're not gonna be able to get all the dirt off of it, but if we can get that surface dirt off, ooh, it'll make the lettuce look a lot nicer and it'll be easier to sell. I brought the lettuce in here to dry off and crisp up. Also, dad was at the wholesaler this morning and he was able to find some strawberries. And let me just tell you, they smell amazing. It's been a rough year for strawberries and we haven't been able to find any local ones. Those are the first ones we've been able to buy. And the funny thing is that's all dad went to the wholesaler for this morning, strawberries, but he got what he needed. First basket of eggs for the morning. And now we have our second basket of eggs. While I was collecting chicken eggs, Dad and Daniel were loading up some concentrate into a bag. Now we use the same concentrate for grinding feed for our chickens, and that's where it's going. My Uncle Mark needed some concentrate, so we bagged a few up for him. And speaking of chicken concentrate, we actually have no feed for our chickens, so we need to grind some this morning. So I'm running up to grab the 100 to pull corn out of the bin, and Dad and Daniel are gonna get everything else into place for grinding. I get to sit in the new seat. Oh, wow, it's like a brand new tractor. And I gotta remember the parking brake works in this thing now. Only one issue I can see, it is a little dirty in here, but we can get this all cleaned up. Now that we're getting a lot of the ingredients in bulk, it is a lot easier to grind feed for our animals. And we're actually saving a little bit of money now. When you can order in bulk, you don't have to pay for the bags that they're using. So we're saving money, it makes it easier on us. And we have the comfort knowing that we have concentrate and we have other ingredients here. We don't have to worry about going out and purchasing them every time. I don't know, Dad, it feels like I'm in a brand new tractor. I was telling you. I just gotta make sure it doesn't overflow anywhere because if it overflows, I get in trouble. <laughs> Boom, we're all done. Well, I shouldn't say all done. We got all the corn pulled out of the bin that we needed. Nope, you're good. There you go. 
these are the two main ingredients that we have the corn and then our concentrate There we go. Grinder is into place. Now all we need to do is add our ingredients and then we're good to go. What are you doing? Are you playing? Before we can start grinding, we had one more step. We needed to measure out the corn, so we're putting it into these barrels. Our animals follow a certain diet that we set, and we have to stay within certain parameters. So with that understanding, we have to be very careful what we add to their feed, which is why we weigh everything out. We know how heavy a barrel of corn is, so if we can keep that in mind as we're filling, well, then it's going to make sure that our animals are, number one, safe, but also healthy. We have a few different selections of screens for grinding. So we're now putting in our chicken screen. It allows the feed to be ground at a smaller size, which makes it a lot easier for the chickens to digest. chickens do need to be fed today since we're grinding this is a wonderful opportunity to get it done so we're gonna feed the chickens Daniel and I just got all of these feeders filled up and the feeders in the back. So the chickens are fed for the day and it looks like the feed grinder is just about empty. So that'll wrap up grinding feed for this morning as well. Now that we're all finished with grinding feed and we've got everything unloaded, we're gonna have to put the grinder back into the shop, which Daniel will do. And finally, once everything's moved back into its original place, we'll be able to head on to our next job. So everyone, our next job brings us out to the fields because we are gonna be harvesting some vegetables and you're never gonna believe what vegetable we're harvesting today. If you guessed peas, well, you would be correct. I don't know how you would have guessed that. I mean, it's basically the only vegetable we've really harvested this year, peas and lettuce. But don't worry, there'll be more. There'll be more shortly. Now, the last time we harvested, which would be yesterday, we got one half of the field done and we were able to get a good amount of peas harvested. I was pretty happy with what we saw. Now we're trying to finish off the rest of the field. Now there is one little issue. This side of the field does seem to have less peas in it. I'm not sure if it was a planting issue. Maybe this ground out here is a little on the rockier side, which doesn't hold moisture. But whatever the case, we're gonna be happy with whatever we can find. And so far I'm finding more than I expected to be here. It's just the plants are a little spaced out further. They're sparse, uh, the peas, they're not completely developed on each plant. So we have to do a little bit of selective picking here and there. Oh, there we go. So I always flip over the plant. This is probably one of the biggest bonuses to harvesting peas, or I should say one of the only bonuses. I right, you just peel that off. Oh, look at that. Oh, that. Tastes like candy. Mm mm mm. Very good. Oh, just like the gift that keeps on giving. I just keep turning the plant over and I keep finding more peas. Now, something people are gonna start wondering again is if our backs hurt at the end of the day. There are days where I get pretty tired I'll tell you what, in the early part of the year, when we just start picking again, yeah, your back can get a little sore at the end of the day. 
However, by the time you get past pea harvest and you start moving on to other vegetables, your body starts to get used to it. And it's not too much of a challenge. It doesn't really bother me at night. And I just think it's because I've done this my whole life that my back is pretty used to it. Now, a lot of people don't realize when we're picking and we're standing up like this, see when we're picking like this, people don't realize we rest our arm on our knee and that actually helps to support your whole body. So if you're harvesting and you're out picking in the garden, when you're picking like this, try putting your elbow on your knee and then just kind of resting your weight on this elbow. You can even pick with it sometimes. You use it to hold the veggies. This is a way I pick and it really helps me out and I don't get too sore at the end of the day. It looks like Dad and Daniel have made it all the way down to the end of where their rows started. So now they are picking their way back to us. We already picked half the field, so it's not gonna take too, too much longer. But for now, we probably have like uh, about 100 to 120 feet between us, and then the peas will be done for the day. Normally, we will harvest peas two or three times. However, because of the dry weather, we don't have too many blossoms coming on. Too many more peas. There are some here and there, but nothing that warrants a second picking. We might come through a second time just so that we have peace of mind knowing we did the best we could, but it's not looking like there's gonna be too substantial of a harvest for our second time picking. One of the best pieces of advice I have for harvesting peas is don't eat any of them. Because if you eat them, then you wanna stop and have more. It's just a slippery slope. It's a slope you don't need to be on when you're trying to get finished harvesting for the morning. I just want to stop and eat all of them. We just got finished picking for the morning and we ended up with 10 baskets of shell peas. Never mind, scratch that. We did a quick recount. We have 11 baskets of peas, so that's even better. We have now got all the peas loaded onto the truck, so we're gonna take these home and get them into the cooler. I can't even begin to tell you how satisfying it is to be out here harvesting again, but look at the weeds in these peas down here, our first planting. And then when I cross up to the second planting that is in blossom right now, look at the difference. Isn't that crazy? We tried cultivating them both, but we were able to hit this second planting twice. And I think it has something to do with the dry, dry weather, which is why the weeds grew down there. We did irrigate a little bit on those peas when it was super dry, and that might have been part of the problem. But it's all good. We're happy with what we're getting. And check out this wheat. It's starting to turn yellow. It's starting to golden up. That's what we're looking for. Harvest time is around the corner. Well, that was a successful morning of picking 11 baskets of peas, bringing our grand total to, I believe, oh, I think we're just about at 20. And that's just for shell peas. We still have snow and snap back there to harvest. Probably not gonna be doing that today, but if we need to get them, we can. And that brings our grand total to 24, I think. That's a lot of hand picking. That's a lot of peas. And we are now at home, which that's a good thing because it is lunchtime. So let's see, what are we having, Grammy? Well, you're kind of late. I see that. Roast well, beef sandwiches and we had tuna fish, but that's all fine. Oh, yeah, I see that. We just got finished with lunch and now we are all loading up on the vehicles. We want to get potatoes hilled, as you heard us mention this morning. But to do that, we have to move the irrigation pipe out of the field. So we're just about ready. We just need Matthew and he's now getting in the side by side. So the next thing we're gonna do is move irrigation pipe. Now with these beautiful potatoes that we're walking through, we'd have liked to hilled them a little earlier on. Unfortunately, we were never able to get it done. So now is a good opportunity to do so. And that's the biggest reason why we need this irrigation pipe moved out of here. That way we can get all the potatoes hilled and we don't need to skip over any rows. This job's a lot nicer when you have this many people to do it. Being out in these potatoes, it gives us a better opportunity to look at them a little more closely. We can examine them to make sure that we don't have any pest pressure, which I'm not seeing. The potatoes have wonderful growth coming. And here and there, we are also starting to see blossoms. 
Great signs for the potato. As we were moving the pipe, we were paying close attention just to make sure that we didn't see any potato bugs. We did not see any, so that's a good sign. Before we head back to the farm, we need to grab a point off our chisel plow. We're gonna be putting this point onto our hiller. Some of these older machines have interchangeable parts, and let me tell you, we enjoy using the interchangeable parts. I'm an old machine. All we have to do is take this point home and put it onto our hiller, and then the hiller will be good to go. The hiller is up above the house, and the way we have it put up there, you can't back into it and hook it up. So dad's gonna run up and grab it with the forklift and then bring it down and we'll be able to get it attached. We have the piece that we need on the back of the side-by-side. -side. They are gonna be pulling the tractor in here to get everything connected. We're gonna be adding one of these shovels onto the pack to help with hilling. So that'll make the job a lot easier. And while they work on getting this machine all set up and ready to go, I'm gonna be running with Matthew to deliver this corn and pick up a calf. Matthew and I are now on our way to pick up the calf. What's nice is the seed corn that we're delivering is to the same farm where we're picking up the calf. So once we get the calf picked up, we deliver the seed, we'll be on our way home. We just got the corn put into the barn. Now we're running up to pay for the calf and then we're gonna grab the calf and be on our way. We just got our calf all loaded up and then we were talking to the farmer over here. He was mentioning that it was way too dry but the rain that they had received when we got our rain really helped them out a lot. When we came up over the mountain, it was obvious that everything was hurting for rain over here too. And you'll see areas where it's low, where the corn has sprouted, but then other areas where it didn't do so well. I mean, they were struggling with the same thing we were. They look like they're about to receive some rain. So we are on our way home. We don't want this girl on the back to get rained on. And there she is, the new baby. We put her right here in the middle. She is a beautiful one and she's ready to grow. Now that we're home, I'm gonna hop in the side by side and run back and check on dad. He's been running the hiller. I just wanna see how it's working. Oh well, I must say the hiller is doing a very nice job. Some of the potatoes are a little too large to be going through with the hiller, but it doesn't seem like dad is having any issues. You know, it looks so nice when you go through with the hiller and it makes all that money we spent on our new planter and on all our upgrades worth it. And I know this year we're gonna have a really good potato harvest. I can just feel it. From just driving by the cold crops, I can tell that they are doing amazing. We did have to replant right here. We had some sweet corn seed in. It didn't come up from the dry. However, what we replanted should be completely fine. That's a beautiful sight. Now the potatoes that my dad just hilled to the left of me, they had more size because they were able to get moisture through irrigation. But sadly, not all of our potatoes were able to enjoy irrigation. We do have some potatoes over here, which dad has now moved on to. Even though they did not receive the same amount of moisture, there's not too much of a difference between the potatoes. There is a size difference, but beyond that, the potatoes still look great. Since I got back from checking on dad as he was hilling potatoes, I haven't been doing too much, just some cleaning up around the fences. I was running around with the weed whacker and the side by side and I think Daniel and Petey, they've been grabbing hay bales and bringing them home. Are you having fun today? Yeah. Yeah? Good. You want animal crackers? Crackers. Yeah, I can get you some. Can you say please? Please. And now thank you? Thank you. Good girl. It is now closing time here on the farm, so we're getting everything put away for the night. We've also got Joel and Gavin up here with us. They're putting things away. How was your day, Joel? It was good. We got a lot cleaned up at the stable. And how was your day, Gavin? Very grassy. We were making our way up to the house to be done for work tonight, but Callie, she's got to mow the grass with the bubble maker. So, I mean, we got to work a little bit longer. Bubble, bubble, bubble. Let me just tell you, tonight, dinner is looking good. We have got some wings here on the table. We got some dino nuggets, and then over here we have asparagus, and then is this potato and pea soup? 
It's not soup. It's uh, cream peas and potatoes. Oh, potatoes. that sounds good. That sounds really good. But anyway, dinner is getting on the table, so you guys know what that means. This is where we're gonna end the video today. I'd like to thank everyone for watching, and I hope to see you next time. Bye bye. Bye bye. bye, -bye.